Tilder! What is this? This is a collapsible softbox for LED panels made by Neewer. How much does it cost? Anywhere from $26 to $40 depending on which version you get. There's a square version and a circular version. It's extremely quick to set up. It doesn't require a light stand. Softens the light nicely. Do I recommend it? Yes. Done. Roll that intro. Hey, what's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. So today we're gonna find out whether or not these collapsible softboxes for LED panels made by Neewer is gonna be the right solution for you and your overall filmmaking setup. I wanna thank Neewer for sending me out two of these units so I can provide you with my unbiased review today. So in terms of these softboxes, there's two different versions. There is a square version, there is a circular version, and depending on which seller you buy it from, some of them actually come with a little grid that you can attach to it for additional light modification. So depending on which one you get, you can get uh, these soft boxes anywhere from $26 up to 40 some dollars. In terms of their build, they're built pretty well, very similar to those collapsible five-in-one reflectors, especially the diffusion material in front of it. Now these things do collapse in the same way, but I would actually say don't do that because there's actually two uh, solid aluminum rings in there or metal rings. So when you have two of those collapse together and then you're trying to wrench it back into the, its original shape and you end up getting something that looks like a nice little uh, softball, I think if you do that a whole lot of times, you're eventually going to tear through it. So in terms of how I would take this with me, I would just say, just pop the magnetic latches, let it fold flat, and then uh, just get yourself a nylon reusable uh, shopping bag that you can get at your local grocery store. Or some artists have these big sketchbook bags that they have um, to hold their canvases or their sketch pads. And basically just get one large enough to hold as many of them that you need. And therefore you don't have a whole bunch of little softball things and you don't eventually tear through your um, collapsible softbox. So just something to think about. In terms of setup time, it's very, very simple. Once you unfold it, basically there's these little magnetic latches that's gonna hold its shape so that it pops out a little bit further. And then there's Velcro straps in the back for you to Velcro it to your LED panels. In terms of what um, the opening in the back, the square one is pretty much de designed specifically for the Neewar 660s in that its LED panels is perfectly fits right in the back. The circular one can actually accommodate for even larger panels. And in my opinion, it might be the one that you want to go for as we go through the test results, which we're gonna go through right now. But before we get to the test results, I want to kind of explain to you how I'm testing it so that you know um, the light output and what to expect. So these LED panels all have that little plastic cover in front of it, and I am testing all of this without the plastic cover in front of it. And reason I'm doing that is because the plastic cover that goes in front of it is simply to hide the fact that there's a whole bunch of LEDs um, on the panel. Because if you use it without the plastic cover, if you have an object that's gonna cast a shadow onto a wall or any other objects, chances are you're gonna start seeing multiple shadows of that and that doesn't really look desirable. So that's why they have that plastic cover in front of it to kind of mirror all those little lights together and therefore you end up not having that shadow. There's a bunch of discussion in terms of, does this actually diffuse the light? Technically, yes, but it's not necessarily very efficient because of the light having to travel through that plastic. You are losing a decent amount of output when you choose to use that plastic cover. So I'm not doing it because when you have a diffusion cover uh, material here, you have the LEDs here and it's traveling a distance of four, five, six inches. By the time that light gets there, and then the diffusion diffuses it further, it's essentially acting the same way and you're not gonna get that multiple shadow effect. So in my opinion, I would not use the plastic cover and then the diffusion softbox because now you're losing a decent amount of light output and will you actually see softer light because of it? Kind of, but Honestly, not enough for me to say, yes, I have to do it this way. So with all that long explanation out of the way, here are the test results.
Here's another practical test. I have the LED set approximately four feet away from me, and I only have the LED set at 30% using only the daylight LED chips at 5600K. So you can see just how that pop-up softbox is going to soften the light. Obviously it's gonna cut down on the overall power of the light, but if you take a look at that shadow behind me, when you have the bare LEDs, the shadow is nice and harsh. And then when you have the soft boxes in front of it, it does soften that shadow back in the wall. And that wall is approximately three feet away from me. So what's the bottom line here? Is this Neewer collapsible softbox something you should be looking into for your overall lighting kit? And I have to say, definitely yes, because it's very simple to set up. It pops open, magnetic latches, Velcro it on, you're good to go, and it's extremely portable. And also, you don't have to bring an additional light stand traditionally where you would have to hang diffusion material and then shoot the light through it. So you're basically limiting how much stuff you have to carry with you. In terms of which one should you get, should you get the square version or should you get the circular version? For me, I want to always think about my future investment. And I would say the circular one is the one that I would go with for my LED panels. And the reason I say that is because not only is it a much larger diffusion disc, if you will, or surface area, which is gonna give you much more options in terms of getting a much softer light, but you also have a much bigger opening in the back. So the 660 panels, it, you're gonna have to use the uh, barn doors to be able to latch everything together. But if you get a larger LED panel in the future, you can basically know that you can still use this circular softbox with you. Now, in terms of how to use this, there are two different ways, and some people are going to say that you know the 660s with the circular one is probably not going to be great, and that's simply because the 660s have a bunch of little lenses in front of the LED diodes, and that then creates a hot spot in the middle because it's a more spot beam. It's not a very wide beam, and to their, to their argument, yes, I get that having a hotspot in the middle is gonna make the soft light a little bit inconsistent, but it could be how you wanna light it. You want the main subject to have the, the brighter of the, <laughs> the soft light, and then it falls off behind them. So you can think of it that way. But if this is of concern to you and you want to make sure the entire disc is illuminated, then if you use the Neewer RGB 660s, which are using SMDs instead, where they don't have the lenses, that provides a much more wide beam, and therefore you can illuminate the disc um, more evenly that way. And of course, depending on what other LED panels you get, just take a look at it. Does it have lenses on it or does it have uh, no lenses on it? And you can usually check what the beam angles are, whether it's like a 60, an 80, a 120, a 140, or a 180 degree flood beam, okay? So just wanna address that real quick. In terms of overall light output, is it gonna be right for you? Now for me, I'm coming at it as a narrative filmmaker where I am constantly trying to make sure I have full control of the lighting situation in that scene, in that room. So for me, yes, this is definitely enough paired up with the 660 LEDs, because again, the bi-colored uh, 660s, I was only using the 5600K LEDs only, and at 30% with my GH5 at ISO 400 and F2.8, so very, conservatively, not low light settings, if you will. And I was still able to get a nice key um, on my face. If I was battling some other lights, I still have another 70% of output to really blast through that thing. And if I need to take that light further at six feet away, maybe even seven feet away, I'm still gonna be okay and get enough light coming at the subject. Now, if you are a corporate filmmaker, you're doing a lot of interviews, this is solely gonna depend on your client and what you normally do. So if normally your um, clients are saying, yes, just go to this conference room, there's no windows or just some bare room um, where you can flip the lights off, then yeah, you have plenty of control of that lighting situation similar to a narrative filmmaker. But if you have a lot of higher end clients that are saying, hey, we want you to shoot in this conference room, it's got these gorgeous windows all around so you can see outside, um, you're gonna be battling a whole lot of natural light coming in and depending on where you're setting up your person, but if they wanna be able to see out that window, you're gonna need a much more powerful light than these panels can provide you. So no, it probably won't work out for you. Um, in terms of event videographers, uh, 
again, it really depends on what kind of stuff you're doing. If you're trying to illuminate a nice large reception hall or the dance floor, the dance floor when they're dancing, depending on how big that ballroom is, you might be able to get away with it. It's gonna be a soft light. It's definitely not gonna be terribly harsh. Um, but again, it's gonna really depend. And if you have done weddings of all sorts of sizes, then I would highly suggest probably you're gonna to wanna to get a much more powerful light because you need to be able to, to adapt to a lot of different locations. So primarily I would say these LED panels, the 660s um, with the softbox, is probably gonna be more for narrative filmmakers and of course YouTubers. If you want to light up your YouTube studio, it would be more than enough for that. And lastly, beginning filmmaker recommendation. So if you wanna go with this whole set, I would say again, two of the Niwa 660 bicolored version, the 2.4 gigahertz version. And then I would get one of the 660 RGB panels. I have all those reviews for you right here if you wanna check those out. And then in terms of soft boxes, which one should you get? I would say, make sure you get at least one circular one. And if your budget allows and you wanna buy more, sure, buy more. Um, should you get the square ones at all? I would say that kind of depends on to you. There's no wrong, uh, it's not wrong if you get one, but I can see that you guys will say, well, wait a minute, then that's only gonna be for my 660 panels because I can't put bigger panels in front of it. And having a square one that small, that size does serve its purpose. So for me, I would use that as a fill light if I have to, or if I have to just get a soft light somewhere and I don't want to necessarily have the bigger round circle and someone holding it or someone uh, rigging it up. So it's kind of hard to say, it's definitely gonna depend on you. But for me, I like to make sure I have variety in case I do run into a situation. So. If I was gonna get a soft box for all three of those lights, I would get two circular ones, one square one. But um, you could easily go with one circular one and two square ones, depending on how you like to light things. But generally speaking, I think the rule for me is definitely make sure you have at least one circular one. Because again, in the future, if you do get bigger LEDs, good to go. If you have LEDs that don't have the little lenses in front of it, that spot beams it right through the center and it has a much wider flood, then you're going to be able to illuminate that disc much better and therefore get softer light. So that is my recommendation. Yes, definitely get one. Just make sure you get one circular one and then you can divvy up however you want for the other lights that you do have. And hey, that is it for this week, everybody. If this video has made all the influence in your purchasing decisions, I would truly appreciate it if you check out my Amazon affiliate links down below. Again, this costs nothing extra to you. It just gives me a little compensation so I can continue making videos like this for you. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. And until then, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys in the next one.